Coming up next on This Week in Torrance, a local business announces some big news. We'll have details. Plus, locals come out to see the upgrades coming to a popular park. Then a famous Los Angeles eatery opens its doors at the Delamo Fashion Center. We'll take you to their grand opening. And the new aquatic center finally breaks ground. These stories and much more are just seconds away. Your local news starts right now. Hello and welcome to This Week in Torrance. I'm Jin Chun. And I'm Ben McCain. Thanks for joining us. Here are your top stories. Exciting news was announced by a local company planning to take on a new venture. Phenomenex Inc., a global technology leader in research, manufacturing, and distribution of novel analytical chemistry solutions worldwide, is being acquired by Donaher Corporation, which is a Fortune 100 50 science and technology company. Donaher will continue with Phenomenex operations and headquarters in Torrance and plans to keep good relations with the city of Torrance. Being a part of this larger, even, um, even larger, more well-known global entity such as Danaher could potentially bring um, more focus on Torrance and the business-friendly atmosphere that we have here and how we're in support of the business community and expansion and retention of our businesses here. President of Phenomenex, Fasha Majur, says he will continue as president as well. As well. Phenomenex has been around for 35 years, and Donahair plans to invest 11 to $15 million into Phenomenex's location on Madrid Avenue. Phenomenex has grown to having more than 700 employees who sell and provide support to 92 countries. The president says that he has another company called Neothrex, which is growing and expanding in Torrance, too. After nearly a decade of discussion about the need of an aquatic center for the Torrance Unified School District, the community finally had the chance to celebrate a dream come true. Torrance City Cable reporter Hibis Ahmed has this story. So this is uh, a shovel uh, made for the Torrance Aquatic Center groundbreaking October 10, 2016. Congratulations. I think it's a great day for the school district. It's a great day for the community. There are several people in the community that have lived here for over 50 years that truly believe they would never see this day happen. A dream come true for all those involved. The groundbreaking ceremony marked a momentous day for Superintendent Dr. George Mannon, Torrance Unified School Board members and the Aquatic Center Committee. There are many of our parents that won't be picking up their kids at 10 o'clock at night after practice because it's so late um, they shouldn't have to practice at 10 o'clock at night but that's the only way the city and that we can get it done so it, it really will be uh, a, a strong boom in 2014 Torrance voters saw the need of an aquatic center and passed measure U which would fund various district projects including the building of a 15 million dollar world-class aquatic center the project has everything that maybe even a college would have for a swim facility, and we're doing this at a high school level. Serving 16 aquatic teams across four public high schools in Torrance, the new aquatic center on a nearly 12-acre lot will have a competition-sized pool, a warm-up pool, elevated bleachers for 500 spectators, separate locker rooms for each school, and even solar water heating panels. And this is going to open things up. You know, I think uh, having our own facility, we're going to be able to schedule better. Uh, have you know more room to swim instead of a half and a half of the side of the pools and uh, it's just going to help all around. For years competitive high school swim teams have been practicing at the Benstead E Plunge, the city's recreational pool and now they'll have a place exclusively to better their swim skills. The, the, the plunge was a compromise um, and I think having something that's going to be theirs uh, is going to go a long way to making them a lot more serious athletes. Aquatic Center committee member Kevin McIntosh says as a parent and a former swim athlete, the groundbreaking ceremony was a moment that reflected a community effort. I think one of the things that this is going to echo to the kids is that the city of Torrance, and Torrance Unified in particular, is serious about having a, a world-class facility. The committee was made up of a diverse group that addressed any issues that parents or faculty may have. One committee member, Timothy McAtee, who's also a Torrance firefighter, says this aquatic center is solving a decade-old problem. 
the, the goal was to have a um, vested interest for all four high schools, representation for both boys and girls, to bridge both swimming and a uh, water polo at the same time. And as McAtee looks forward to having his children and grandchildren use the aquatic center one day, Mayor Patrick Fury says the center will also benefit the city. Having this here is going to increase the property values of all, every one of our homes because it increases the educational value of, of the schools. With construction underway, everyone in the community is optimistic about the future once students start diving in. And hopefully we'll see some uh, future Olympians that started training here. It, it'll be very dynamic for the entire South Bay. For Torrance City Cable, I'm Hippa Samad. Thanks, Hippa. Dr. George Mannon also says that local swim clubs have already reached out to the district about leasing the pool. The pool is set to open September 2017. It is located off of Crenshaw Boulevard behind SoCal Rock. The Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office recognized a citizen for his help in solving a Torrance cold case murder recently. Three times a year, the District Attorney's Office presents Courageous Citizen Awards. It honors ordinary people who have performed extraordinary acts of selflessness in assisting in criminal prosecutions, aiding victims, preventing crimes, or capturing suspects. 60-year-old Charlie Abbott from San Pedro was recently honored for his assistance in helping the Torrance Police Department in the murder case of Lynn Knight. Police originally suspected the victim's ex-boyfriend of the crime, but at the time there was not enough evidence to charge him. But decades later, Torrance police re-examined the case and Knight's ex-boyfriend was charged with the murder. Prosecutors say Mr. Abbott was an expert witness who challenged the defendant's alibi that he was sailing during the time of the murder. In 2014, the jury convicted Douglas Bradford of first-degree murder and he was later sentenced to 26 years to life in prison. The event took place in the City Club in Los Angeles. The award is given in partnership with the District Attorney's Office and local Rotary Clubs. A well-known site at a popular park received a new paint job. This old red car located at Wilson Park along the Southern California Live Steamers miniature train tracks transformed into this recently. It was all thanks to Eagle Scout Diego Medina who made it his mission to renovate the red car. It took two days to complete the project. They used plywood to close off windows and doors to prevent interior vandalism. The Southern California Live Steamers will have a night run for Halloween on October 28th and 29th. Tickets are available on run days at the steamer Depot. For more information, go to SouthernCaliforniaLiveSteamers.com. Also at Wilson Park recently, locals had the chance to voice their opinion on improvements coming to the popular park. The Community Services Department hosted a meeting, community meeting at Wilson Park, sharing the design concept of proposed improvements to the playground equipment. So far, the department has hosted two meetings. They showed one design rendering to receive feedback. The playground will include engineered wood chips, there could be potentially four new toddler swings, a teeter-totter, and many more elements of climbing. The meeting's purpose was to get feedback from the community and find out what they wanted in the park. The community planning phases where we get input from the community with regards to a design, and we're able to take it back, put some finishing touches on it, and have it ready hopefully for construction shortly into 2017. The design will be given to the Park and Recreation Commission next, then it will go to Council in December. Well, still ahead, we'll take you to a special tour of historic homes in Torrance. Plus, little ones spent time learning about fire safety. We'll take you there. I'm six years old. I like to go to the beach with my cousins. When I was a baby, I was very sick. And then I got a liver transplant from my organ donor. He saved my life. This gift of life was made possible by an organ donor. Imagine what you could make possible. Sign up as an organ, eye, and tissue donor. Go to organdonor.gov. Today, a new creature walks among us, terrorizing innocent citizens. Until this threat can be contained, we must all be on the lookout for the dreaded digital dead walkers. Dude. They're not looking out for you. Engage! A public service safety message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons who want to keep everyone well connected Sorry. with strong, healthy bones. The Torrance Police Department hosted another Coffee with a Cop event recently, taking place at the Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf on Hawthorne Boulevard. The 2016 National Coffee with a Cop Day brought out local residents to mingle with police officers. 
They had the opportunity to ask questions, voice concerns, and get to know police officers better. The United States Department of Justice Office of Community-Oriented Policing Services announced this year that October 7th was the first National Coffee with a Cop Day. It's become a national movement, and now more than 2,000 law enforcement agencies and the communities they serve have participated in this program. After months of planning, a local school celebrated its big event recently, inviting the community to check out who they are. The annual St. Catherine Labore Festival offered the community mouth-watering food from tri-tip Mexican and American cuisine. The festival has been hosted since the late 60s. The school and parish make it a point to make sure the festival has rides for adults and children so that everyone can enjoy the event. It's also one of the largest fundraisers that they host every year. It's always about fellowship. This is not just for St. Catherine Labore Parish and its school you know, and its families. This is also a community of North Torrance. It's been going on for a long time. And then the rest of the South Bay, they come out and visit us. From raffles to silent auctions this year, they gave away $5,000 as the first raffle prize. The school is located on Redondo Beach Boulevard near 170th Street in Torrance. A new addition to the Delamo Fashion Center will keep your kids busy. The center, in partnership with Children's Hospital Los Angeles, opened a new play area where families can take their young ones for some downtime play. Located on the lower level near Joanne Fabric and Crafts, the play area has seating and interactive games with activities. They have a ball machine and a butterfly wall that encourages kids to experiment with the concept of cause and effect. The Children's Hospital Los Angeles Outpatient Center in Torrance offers specialty care by 26 physicians. Dozens of community members brought their pets for a special event at a local church. One by one, dogs, cats, and even parrots were granted blessings and prayers in the church's sanctuary. They were also given thanks for their lives. Church members share with the animals that they are holy and blessed creatures because they make the pet owners' lives that much richer. It's also an opportunity for pet owners to enjoy time with their pets. God's got his arms around all of us. That was the genesis of this event eight years ago. We hold it at this time in October each year uh, on the closest Saturday to uh, the commemoration day of St. Francis of Assisi, who was remembered as a great lover of animals. We're all children of God, and, uh, and it's wonderful that First Lutheran gives us everybody an opportunity to have their animals blessed if, if they choose to. Pastor Bill Hurst says that in light of the coyote problem in Torrance, this event is extra important. It's a reminder that the community needs to work together to find a middle ground with compassion to keeping pets safe. Many pet-friendly organizations also were present to support the event. Pink's Hot Dogs has come to town. South Bay fans of the iconic hot dog stand no longer have to travel to Hollywood. The Pink's family opened their latest location right here in Torrance. Reporter Jerisa Blunt has the story. The city of Torrance welcomed Pink's Hot Dogs at the official ribbon cutting ceremony with the co-owners Richard, Gloria and Beverly Pink. The Del Amo Fashion Center is the first mall location for the popular hot dog stand. We love Torrance. Torrance is a magnificent city. It's got so many wonderful people. It's got such a large population. So many people in Torrance have come up to us at Pink's and have said, I'm so glad that you're here. I no longer have to make this hour drive all the way up into Hollywood. I like Hollywood, but thank God you're here. An American dream realized. Pink started with a $50 push cart and an idea. Paul and Betty Pink sold the first hot dog in 1939. Now, 77 years later, Pink's has become a favorite for local residents, tourists, and even celebrities. I think it just shows a good model that you can build yourself up from the ground and, and really get going. We've seen the resurgence in the city of Torrance uh, from the recession, and this just adds another element to it. It's like a candle on the, on the cake. The menu may look a bit different from other locations, but there's a tasty addition just for shoppers at Del Amo. Well, first of all, it's a little more streamlined because we know people are in a hurry. 
that they want to get back to shopping, particularly with the holidays coming. So instead of having 35 hot dogs on the menu, we got 12 hot dogs on the menu, but we got our best sellers, all right? We got the chili cheese dog, and we got the golden rings dog. We even have a Del Amo spicy dog. We have such a delicious assortment of hot dogs and hamburgers. Not everyone knows that Pink's has hamburgers as well, but our chili cheeseburger, I say, is as good as any in the country. With all the options, I was curious to know which menu item was the favorite. Everybody has to have their signature element. Mine is the chili cheese dog. My favorite thing, without doubt, is the chili cheese dog. I decided to make my way up to the counter to order the favorite Pink's chili cheese dog. It was everything I had expected. Absolutely delicious. For Torn City Cable, I am Jerisa Blunt. Thanks, Jerisa. Torrance is the 15th location for Pink's Hot Dogs. They also recently opened a location in the Philippines. A local restaurant is getting big attention for its tasty food. Mongol King, located on Vista, Montana, near Pacific Coast Highway, was named Best Mongolian Barbecue in Los Angeles Weekly. The popular eatery gives patrons a chance to pick their own ingredients before they are cooked up. Mongol soup is also a popular dish on their menu. On the weekends, they offer an all-you-can-eat menu option. After millions of high school students applied for a scholarship competition, only 16,000 were chosen as semifinalists. The 2017 National Merit Scholarship Competition takes into account preliminary scholastic aptitude test scores. Based on these, only some are chosen as semifinalists across the country. The list of semifinalists for the National Merit Scholarship from California included students from right here in Torrance. From South High School, Julia Hahn, Margaret Jang, Yubin Lee, and Ian Lee are on the list. From Torrance High School, Justin Yokota is a semifinalist. West High School had three semifinalists, including Grace Carley, Matthew LaRue, and Michelle Zhang. One high school student from Bishop Montgomery also made it on the list. It was Angelo Pasco. Only 15,000 students are expected to advance to the finalist level in February, and only half will win scholarships. Congrats to the students. The semifinalists are less than 1% of U.S. high school seniors and are the highest scoring entrants in each state. Torrance's Toyota Motor Company is recalling their well-known green car. Toyota recently launched a global recall of its redesigned Toyota Prius sedan after reports of a possible deadly defect involving its parking brake. It says that it will be recalling nearly 340,000 units around the world. 92,000 of them will be in the United States, affecting 2016 and 2017 models. In a statement, Toyota says that when the brake comes inoperative, becomes inoperative, it can increase the risk of a crash. So far, Toyota has received reports of crashes, injuries, and deaths and are investigating them. Toyota plans to repair cars for free once owners are notified in November. The Torrance Fire Department hosted many events for Fire Prevention Week. From singing to dancing, it was family story time at Henderson Library. But this reading time was all about learning what firefighters do. For Fire Prevention Week, the Torrance Fire Department teamed up with Torrance Libraries for the first time to spread awareness. After reading time, attendees had the opportunity to meet and greet firefighters from the rescue unit as well. It's important for children to remember that um, certain dangers that are around the home and to prevent fires is to start them very young, make them junior fire marshals and get the parents more involved. They were even given an up-close look at the fire engine and saw the rescue unit's instruments and tools they used during a rescue scenario. The children walked away with some treats as well. They received coloring books and stickers. Still ahead. Sports Desk anchor Byron Newsom gives us the latest on what's happening in the Torrance sports world. I am a veteran, and my victory was finding the strength to be a champion. I am a veteran. My victory is having a job I can be proud of. America's veterans are on their most important tour, the tour of their lives. My victory was finishing my education. Mine is proving a disability is not a limitation. At DAV, 
we're on a mission to help veterans get the benefits they've earned. My victory is having my new battle buddy. As veterans face their challenges, DAV is there to help for victories great and small. I'm a veteran, and my victory is getting the help I needed to put my life back together. DAV offers veterans of all generations a lifetime of support. I am a veteran. My victory is being there for my family. When America's veterans win, we all win. Help us support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. Welcome back, everybody. Here are some upcoming events you won't want to miss. The Torrance Roseblood Association is teaming up with Soup Plantation for its fundraiser to support the city's 2017 Tournament of Roses Parade float entry. 15% of the proceeds will benefit the organization between 5 to 8 p.m. The Soup Plantation is located at 21309 South Harthon Boulevard. You must print out a flyer from torrancerosefloat.org to take part. And on Sunday, October 23rd, the Torrance Antique Fair is back from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. You can stop by downtown Torrance to shop from one-of-a-kind vendors selling antiques, collectibles, and arts. This event will be extra special as it celebrates Street Fair Antique Store 18 years of business in the city. There will be a pet parade, activities, and live music. And there's another community flu shot clinic being offered for free at the Ken Miller Recreation Center on October 24th between 10 a.m. to noon. You can stop by to get one. For more information, you can call 310-618-2930. Now, I know this is not scripted, and I don't want to shake anybody <laughs> up because I'm going to be ad-libbing, but I want to congratulate you and the team that put together the Why Torrance video. It's gone, I think, I think we can say viral. We've had a lot of views. I, I and just want to, I, I just want to, <laughs> uh, I want to give you your props and your team. Well, our team did an incredible job featuring local residents and yes. community members to show why Torrance really is a great city. So I thought, successful job on our whole team. Uh, I'm going to give you an attaboy, in this case, <laughs> an girl. Before we go, we have a sneak peek at what's happening on the sports desk with Byron Newsom. That's right, Byron. What's going on on this week? Hey, Jen and Ben, coming up on the Sports Desk, two teams play for more than sex and spikes. Find out how Torrance and West were digging even deeper to make a point in this crosstown matchup. Plus, fighting for that number one spot. Can North take out their westerly rival for the second straight season? Tune into the Sports Desk at 4 and 9.30 p.m. right here on City Cable. Jen and Ben, back to you. Thanks, Byron. Love your energy. The residents of Torrance have opened their doors literally to help preserve one of the city's greatest landmarks, the Torrance Historical Society and Museum. Reporter Jarisa Blunt takes us there. Torrance's fall tour of historic homes is an exciting event for residents and the hundreds of visitors who take to the streets for a self-guided tour in Old Town Torrance. I think it is that kind of hidden enchantment of going into somebody else's door. I think, one, people like history, and I do, but also I think people are also intrigued by what's behind that door. The biennial event is the largest fundraiser for the Torrance Historical Society and Museum, which is completely run by a staff of volunteers. The fundraiser helps with the day-to-day -day operations and special programming. We now have wireless and we never even had a plug-in. And so in the last few years, we've been lucky enough, fortunate enough to have some good advisors from the community. And I am so happy to have a scanner and a large screen and wireless. And that's been one of our projects for a couple of years. Each home on the tour was originally built between 1922 and 1940. There are about half a dozen of those historical homes on the tour. Each one is marked by one of these Model A classic cars donated by the South Bay Touring A's. The historical home tour gives people a look at historic homes and then they can see how they've been renovated and updated for how we live today, but they still maintain that charm. So it's good to get a visual like that because seeing is believing. These beautiful homes, which were originally purchased for as low as $3,000, now can be found for over half a million dollars. The Torrance Women's Club is also part of the tour, giving attendees a rest stop to enjoy fresh baked cookies, compliments of the Torrance Bakery, along with some beautiful artwork. 
Now they allow us to have an art show this year of views of all around Torrance, and they're all historic sites. People, Madrona Marsh, the Catholic Church, Foster's Freeze, gives the artist a chance to paint historic things. The tour is a two-day event open to the public. Attendees do not need a reservation, just a willingness to have fun and get in a little exercise. For Torrance City Cable, I'm Jerisa Blunt. Thank you, Jerisa. Torrance's Fall Historical Home Tour has been around since 1980. This year, the ticket sales for the fundraiser exceeded their expectations. Well, that does it for us on This Week in Torrance. I'm Ben McCain. And I'm Jen Chun. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Oh, don't miss.